So you join us at the weed screen. This is the third year we've had a weed screen at the demo site uh, here at Bog Hall. And for those of you that haven't seen a weed screen before, what we effectively do is we sow a number of uh, grass crops and grass weeds from left to right. So we've got here a strip of hybrid um, rye, winter wheat, winter barley, cultivated oats, wild oats, a number of bromes, some rye grass, annual meadow grass and rutstail fescue. We've also got a grass walkway down the middle as well. And then what we do is we apply a series of treatments at 90 degree angle across all the, the, the grass sown strips. So we've got 30 treatments in total, uh, going from pre-emergences uh, treatments to pre-emergence and uh, early post-emergence follow-up, purely post-emergence, and then we've also got far end, which we'll look at later on, we've got some uh, spring tidy ups as well um, and you can see then um, when we take a drone shot you can see which of the treatments have been a uh, have been best at, at controlling the weed and also we can also see if there's any crop effects as well and that's why the crops um, are also sown in the, in the weed screen so that is what a weed screen is we are now looking at an aerial image of the weed screen and we will now go through the various treatments and how they've performed on different weeds. The first close-up image concentrates on the difference between the untreated pots and the different formulations of the Fenicet. It may not be clear from the image, but unfortunately, in some of the pots, such as the annual meadowgrass pots, germination was poor, therefore uh, some spring broadleaf weeds have creeped into the pots. If we look closer at the sterile brome pots, you can see there's a difference between the control provided by straight flow Fenicet, generic Liberator and Liberator, with Liberator providing the overall best control. What is interesting is if you look below at the rye brome population, all of the pre-emergence herbicides seem to have struggled. This was a consistent theme throughout the trial with pre-emergence herbicides providing poor control of ribrome, whereas the post-emergence herbicides, which we will come on to later, provided a good level of control. This is a close-up video of the ribrome population at the pots. As you can see, it's slightly different to other brome species, so please look at our website for further information on how to identify it. We now look at Liberator in conjunction with other uh, pre-emergence herbicide options in the form of a stack. As you can see, they have provided additional control when you look at Anthem um, alongside Liberator, especially for broadleaf weeds. The grass weed efficacy seems to be fairly similar. Avidex, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have brought that much broadleaf weed control, however, um, it has certainly helped control the population of ribrome, which has been difficult for all the other pre-emergence herbicides. The next slide contains images which include our new products which will be brought to the market this year. Alternator Met and Aclonophen with Liberator. Alternator Met contains the same components as Liberator with the addition of Metribuzin, whereas Aclonophen is a new active ingredient to the cereal market and will be sold in the form of Precluse alongside Liberator in a co-pack. Both of the new products have shown in trials that they are a step above Liberator and will bring additional grass weed and broadleaf weed activity to herbicide programs. Finally, we move on to the post-emergence products. Um, these products were applied following a pre-emergence herbicide of Liberator uh, with an autumn post-emergence application. As you can see, the winter oats seem to have been taken out by uh, the application of Anthem and Atlantis and at the bottom of the screen where the rat's tail fescue and annual grass was supposed to be the broadleaf weed seemed to have been cleared up considerably. And finally we just have an overview of the spring post-emergence products alongside a pre-emergence application. As you can see it's done a very good job of tidying up all the grass weeds which were sown as well as some of the broadleaf weeds which have occurred due to no crop competition. We will now jump over to the field and have a further look at the impact of 
these post-emergence products on the difficult ribrome population which the pre-emergence sprays were struggling to cope with. So we are now looking at the same ribrome population that we looked at earlier. Uh, these are April applied post-emergence products which seem to have worked better than a March applied product. Um, this is a competitor's product uh, which seems to have had some activity on the ribrome but it's not cleaned up uh, completely. We've now just moved on to the monolith plot which seems to have tidied up the ribrome quite nicely. Although there's a couple of broadleaf weeds still there, the propoxycarbazone and mesosulfuron has had great activity on this ribrome population. And then finally we move on to one of our development uh, plots which seems to have real potential and has cleaned up the ribrome significantly in this trial. So the last treatment we've got in the weed screen is actually a treatment of uh, glyphosate. It was applied um, in the late March um, and you can see that it's it's done, a, as you would expect, a, a good job for just walking past the hybrid rye, the wheat, the barley, coming on to the, the cultivated oats uh, and also the uh, wild oats as we can just come in to see here. It's done a good job. Obviously the broadleaf weeds that have emerged um, have obviously come after the treatment has been applied. This is the, the grass path, uh, obviously and then we're coming on to some of the bromes, you can see here the sterile brome and then coming on to the, the rye brome. It's done a good job of controlling these. It was applied at one and a half litres um, of 360 uh, strength glyphosate. crop 